fired for challenging the dress code. Gentlemen, I heard about this story the other day. I thought it was too good to pass on. And so after you watch this video, I want to hear from you down in the comments. Was the company in the right? Were they justified? Or do you think they went to an extreme and they shouldn't have actually taken the actions they did? I want to hear your opinion down there. I'm going to read the quick story. And I'm also at the end of this going to give you my three reasons why I think what I do think. And I'm also going to share with you my personal story of getting fired and why it was probably one of the best things to ever happen to me. Now guys, if you enjoy conversations like this, you want more, you want to engage with a lot of really smart men who are improving their style, improving their presentation, improving their body language and their business skills, you want to go check out my free Facebook group. This group is amazing. I go in there and I'm learning, I'm engaging with people and it's just a great group. So without further ado, let's get into the leather. So the story goes like this. I was able to get a summer internship at a company that does work in the industry I want to work in after I graduate. Even though the division I was hired into doesn't engage with customers, they still had a strict dress code. Now I did notice that someone in the company was wearing flat shoes, non-leather type, basically violating the dress code. And this got me to confront my manager, ask if I could be allowed some leeway. He said no. And so I reached out and I talked to some of the other interns and all of us agreed that we didn't like the dress code, especially when it came to the footwear. They wanted to change it up. They wanted something more comfortable and they also said, you know, we can still dress professional. We don't need to wear jackets. We don't need to wear suits. Maybe we can, you know, have a bit more freedom. So they got together and they created a petition. It was signed by all the interns save one and they went ahead and they submitted their proposal. The next day they're called into an office and they thought they were going to have a negotiation. They were going to talk about this and they were promptly all let go except for the one who did not sign. And it was due to unprofessional behavior. They had to turn in their ID badges and we were shocked. The proposal was written professionally. Like examples I learned in school, what in the world happened? So I know many of you guys are probably thinking, okay, this is a millennial issue. Well, you know what? They've said that this is not a generational issue. They said this about generation X, you know, what was it? Yeah, generation X about the baby boomers. Go back to Roman times. They were always saying the young people have no respect. They don't know what they're doing. They're going to ruin the world. Guys, this is just a learning point for anyone out there that is starting their career. Anyone out there that's just getting getting going. You're going to hit stumbling blocks like this. And first off, getting fired is not a bad thing. It is simply you just hit a limitation and you need to take a step back and say, okay, why did it happen? For these people, I would give them these three pieces of advice. Number one, business is not a democracy. So they made a big mistake. They thought they had power as interns. You almost have no power as an intern. Someone that's been there a year and maybe has an inkling, maybe a little bit of an understanding of how the system works can maybe start to challenge it a bit. Someone that's been there five years probably has a lot more clout and will be listened to. But you were a guest in their home and that's like someone walking in my house and start giving me all of a sudden instructions on how I should do things differently because there's a reason why why and that leads me to point number two that they have a dress code. Dress codes work. Study after study. If you look at professional businesses, they realize that they have people coming to them from all walks of life, all different parts of the world and what they think, what they perceive to be as something that they could wear to meet with a customer, to show up to work is all going to be different. So they've got to have a uniform standard because otherwise you're going to have someone who's thinking one thing works and it works in another country and it just doesn't work over here or someone who grew up around a certain type of dress and all of a sudden they find that that's not permissible in a more conservative work area. So that's that's why dress codes are there. They create trust. They set the tone. You know, people when they show up dressed a certain way, they feel a certain way. So there was a reason why it's there. Finally, point number three is I would question these people's priorities. So in my company, I know we need to stay focused in on business. I don't work my people more than 40 hours a week. I think even 35 hours a week is actually maximum productivity point, but I, we keep it at 40. But the reason I don't go beyond 40 is we work hard and then you're done. And I want you, you need to focus in on your number one priority and then everything else you know, we try to get to. But if you've got multiple priorities or if I know you're going around and you're getting people to sign a petition, because I mean that took some work that took some effort and instantly as a manager or as a business owner, I'm wondering, well, what are you, why are you spending time on this as soon as you get in versus focused on solving problems? 
All right, gents, those are my three points. Now, I promised I would tell you my story about getting fired. So, I came here to Wisconsin to work as the CFO of a manufacturing plant straight out of the University of Texas. And I was promptly fired within a few months because they hired me as the CFO and I probably wasn't actually doing CFO duties. I focused in on business development, on sales and some other things. I came in with some really big ideas and I wanted to shift the entire company. The thing is, is I didn't fully understand the company. I didn't understand the owners and their motivations and where they wanted to go. And I tried to probably do too much too fast. And honestly, I think I scared them. Why that was one of the best things to ever happen to me. Because from that, from, from getting fired and realizing, hey, all of a sudden I was free to start up my first company, a tailored suit. And then from a tailored suit, I created Real Men Real Style. So, you are watching all these videos. I've got millions of views on YouTube. We've got hundreds of thousands of subscribers. I've got 12 employees. I've been able to build this up because I didn't let the fact that I got fired. I looked at that as an opportunity. At the time, I was definitely down. But when one door closes, another door opens up. And you approach it that way, you're going to be okay. And gentlemen, if you want to continue this conversation, go over and join my free Facebook group. I'm going to post this video over there. I'm going to be more engaged in the comments over there and have some deeper discussions. That's what it's there for. I'm going to link to it down in the comments. And that's about it, guys. I'll see you in the next video.